All right, let's continue with these anti-differentiation rules here. So uh, next up we have f of x being equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x. So you take its derivative and you get 1 over x. So if I want to work this thing backwards, if I have the differential equation, f prime of x is equal to 1 over x, then its antiderivative must be the natural log of the absolute value of x, and then add in your constant of integration. Okay, so keep this thing in mind. It's kind of a domain issue here. The domain of this differential equation is all real numbers except 0. When you go to find its antiderivative as the natural log of x, you have to include your absolute value so you can get rid of all of the negative values which were perfectly okay in this original function, which are not okay in the natural log function. All right, and then next up we have the power rule. When I take the derivative of f of x is equal to x to the n, it's the leapfrog thing. I leapfrog that power down and then subtract 1 from it. So it should be n times x to the n minus 1. So if I were to start with this equation to work it backwards, I should just have an antiderivative of x to the nth power and then add in your plus c. The problem here is the same problem that we had right up here. It is unusual that this is how your differential equation will look. Instead, it was just b to the x. And so we had to figure out how to make it work with the derivative rule. So the same thing is going to happen here. You're not going to have your derivative function, your di differential equation look like this. It's actually going to look like x to the nth power. And we want to know what is the antiderivative of x to the n. So let's take a look at that. Let's see if we can come up with that. We, we should probably already have a feel for it from some of the other questions that we did but let's formally find it here. So it's based on the derivative rule, the power rule, which goes x to the n. Its derivative is leapfrog n times x to the n minus 1. All right, we already talked about that. Nice recap. Okay, so the issue that we have now is that that's not the color I choose. Here's my function f of x is equal to x to the n, and I want to work it backwards to find its antiderivative. f of x is equal to... <laughs> the problem is, is that you can't directly use the derivative rule because this thing doesn't match up with that. So we're going to force it to look like that with a substitution of variables. Let's use green. Let's say that here n is equal to... Let's make it match up. Make it match up. K is one of my favorite variables to choose, so I'm going to make this K minus 1. Okay, so I'm just changing the variables around. Don't worry, we're going to change them back eventually. So now I'm going to get rid of this because we're not ready for it and just rewrite my equation as f of x is equal to x to the K minus 1. All right, so far so good. Now this does match up with this part of the derivative rule, but we're missing the n up here. And notice that this and this variable, those are exactly the same because remember it came from leapfrogging down. So there should be a k right up front here to match up with this k. So we're going to force that in there. And when we do, we just change the value of that function. We multiplied it by k, which we can do as long as we also divide it by k. So here's our fancy one, k divided by k. We just multiply it by a fancy one. Okay, so now we're ready to apply the derivative rule just in reverse because this whole top part that's right up here, all of this, its antiderivative should just be burp, working this thing backwards using this same k variable that we introduced here. Its antiderivative should be x to the k. However, we didn't do anything with this k that's on the bottom, so it has to come along for the ride, and then don't forget your plus c. All right, the only thing left to do is to get rid of the k and translate those things back to the original n. We can do that very simply by just solving this equation here for k, adding the 1 over, and I can see that n plus 1 is equal to k. Everywhere I have a k in this antiderivative function, 
I'm going to replace it with an n plus 1. So my real antiderivative should be equal to x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c. Okay, so again, let's make some connections here. Based once again on the inverse property, Uh, between differentiation and anti-differentiation. So, when I take the derivative here, I subtract one from the exponent. When I take the anti-derivative, I'm going to add one to the exponent. When I take the derivative, I multiply by some sort of coefficient, and when I take the anti-derivative, I'm going to divide by that coefficient. So try to make connections like that. It's going to make it a heck of a lot easier for you to remember these anti-differentiation rules. Whoa, that is not what we wanted. We wanted this. Okay, right here. So here's the true power rule for anti-differentiation. If I start with a differential equation, x to the n, then n, its anti-derivative anti is x to the n plus 1 divided by x plus 1, n plus 1, plus c. Um, and then... Uh, Keep in mind that n cannot be equal to negative 1. If n is equal to negative 1, of course, you get a division by 0. But let's think about this in this particular case right here. If x is equal or n is equal to negative 1, it becomes this function here whose antiderivative is actually the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c.